Hey, what's up guys? Today, I'll show you a drama thriller film. Exit plan. Spoilers ahead, watch out and take care. The film begins on January 2019. An insurance detective, Max, tells the camera recorder his sorrowful farewell and that he will be dead once whoever watches the video. Later that night, after the recording, a hotel staff member meets Max in his room. She gives documents with the hotel name Aurora on them, which he signs. After that, Max puts his remaining belongings into a small bag, such as his mobile phone, wallet, and car keys. After that, the hotel staff drives for hours before dropping Max at ramp, but she gives him a pill before he leaves the car. Then, Max gets out and rides an aircraft with two other men. As they fly in the air, Max slowly drifts on to sleep. The scene then changes to the events, explaining what happened before January 10, 2019. It starts with Max waking up from an alarm. He leaves his wife to the bed and goes to the bathroom. Max's morning begins with an app, monitoring his diet, sleep, physical well-being, and even his speech. Max leaves the bathroom after doing his morning routine when he notices toys lined up leading to the dining table. He follows the trail and finds a surprise gift to South Africa and a birthday breakfast. Shortly after, the wife comes out from the bedroom and happily greets Max for a happy birthday. As they enjoy their breakfast, Max informs his wife that he will be going back to work, making her happy. Later that afternoon, Max goes to the doctor's office and does an MRI scan. As he is inside the machine, Max reminisces the day he discovered his sickness. He talks to his client Alice at work, who wants to claim her husband's life insurance. However, the insurance company cannot pay out because Alice's husband has been missing for six months and they are uncertain if he is dead. Max suddenly feels his head aching during the conversation, so he gets up and drinks water. However, he suddenly falls down to the floor with a noise ringing in his ears. After the scan, the doctor informs Max that his brain tumor has grown significantly. They cannot operate on him because a little mishap can kill him. Max is confused because he took time from work and did his diet and the app monitoring. But the doctor does not give him a direct response. Instead, she advises him to be prepared because the tumor will change his behavior and he should do whatever he wants before he runs out of time. After he visits the doctor, Max stays at the hospital for hours, comprehending the bad news and not going to work again. After a few hours, Max meets his wife at a fancy restaurant to celebrate his birthday. The wife begins to discuss her plan when they travel, but she notices Max is unhappy. He nods and gives her sad little smiles. However, Max's smile immediately vanishes, so the wife confesses that Max's work called her and told her that Max did not show up. Instead of telling her the truth, Max lies and says that he still cannot go to work. The wife holds his hand as she understands his situation. However, guilt consumes Max, so he excuses himself to the bathroom. Later that night, Max wakes up as he hears his wife talking to someone on the phone. He silently leaves the bedroom and eavesdrops, as his wife says she does not think she can handle their situation anymore. Max immediately returns to the bed and pretends to be asleep as she joins him. Max continues to pretend that he did not hear her for days until one day, the wife wakes up without Max. The scene then changes to Max in a van, together with the hotel staff and a gentleman's suicide volunteer, nicknamed Mr. Want Death. The van runs through the Scandinavian mountains until they arrive at the Aurora Hotel. The hotel staff accompanies Max to his room, where she informs him of the hotel protocols and schedules. Suddenly, Max feels woozy, so she gives him a glass of water. After ensuring that he is alright, she leaves Max to order his food. Max then changes his attire to the clothes in the closet, eats the food, and sleeps. After a few hours, Max leaves his room and goes to the lobby, where he officially meets Mr. Want Death. He is much younger than Max, but stress and anxiousness are evident on his face. Later that day, Max attends the breathing meditation with other residents. As Max succumbs to the session, he reminisces about what led him to the hotel. He spends days and nights with his wife, and every time he is with her, he wants to tell her the truth. However, his courage vanishes whenever he sees her beautiful face. After she leaves for work, Max goes to the mall. He asks a staff member how to make a noose to hang something. The staff shows him the standard noose and asks Max how much the rope needs to carry. Max replies that it is about 90 kilos. He takes the rope to the counter, leaving the staff stunned, as he realizes that he helped Max tie the rope that will be the equipment for his suicide. After that, Max stands on a chair and puts the rope around his neck, when he suddenly hears a car approaching. Max immediately removes the rope and checks the window, only to see a neighbor. As his first plan to commit suicide did not work out, Max goes to a pier, with the rope tied to a huge rock. He checks the surroundings before putting the noose around his waist and dropping the rock into the water. Max emerges underwater as the weight of the rock brings him down. Just when he finally finds the perfect way to die, he hears his phone ringing. Max immediately frees himself and swims up, thinking it is his wife. However, as he answers the call, he hears Alice's voice telling him to meet her in a hotel room because she has found evidence that her husband is dead. 
Moments later, Max arrives at the hotel room, where Alice shows him a video of her husband filmed on January 7, 2018, informing whoever watches the video that he came to the hotel of his free will. The husband claims that he decided to kill himself that day, with the assistance of the hotel and its staff. He apologizes to Alice for vanishing so suddenly, and not telling her what happened to him. The husband also clarifies that it was not Alice's fault that he came to that decision, and she needs to remember the good things after his death. The video ends, and Alice shares that the video came with a letter from the hotel with its phone number. She contacted the number, but has not received any response. It reveals that Hotel Aurora is a secret facility hidden in the Scandinavian mountains, specializing in assisted suicide fantasies. Max then says he needs to check with the company, if the video is enough proof to get her husband's life insurance. Before Max leaves, Alice clarifies that everything she has done since her husband's disappearance was for closure. The hotel picked Max's interests, so he contacted it and gave all the needed information. As expected, the hotel contacts him and instructs him to get his necessary documents. It also warns him that his decision cannot be cancelled or postponed once he signs the agreement. Back to the present. The hotel staff shows Max the hotel's different ways of assisting suicide. It can be anything the person wants, and whatever it is, the hotel will do everything to make their suicide fantasy come true. Max wants to take a pill in his room. After telling her his desired death, the staff informs him that they will record his farewell statement once they arrange it. After discussing with the staff, Max returns to his room, but a neighbor interrupts him. The neighbor wants to end her life, but she doubts her decision whenever the day comes. Later that day, another staff shows Max the underground tunnel, where they mostly conduct assisted suicide. They go to her office, where the staff informs him more of assisted suicide they do. There is the old-fashioned burial, eco-sustainable freeze-drying, and the exclusive one, the circle of life. To serve that purpose, the hotel will use their earthly remains as fertilizer for their chosen plant. The following day, while Max is in the bathroom finishing showering, he notices the phrase you will get out on the mirror's left bottom. Max dismisses it, and goes outside to watch the picturesque nature in front of him. He notices Mr. Want Death doing his farewell video, meaning his death will be soon. Later that day, while Max enjoys the hot tub's warm water, Mr. Want Death joins him. Max notices the numerous cut marks on Mr. Want Death's right arm, but he remains silent as Mr. Want Death shares his feelings. It is his last night, but instead of being frightened, Mr. Want Death does not feel anything except hatred for himself. He begins to be emotional, as he shares that even he cannot stand himself. So Max hugs him as he breaks down into tears. After that, they go to the sauna, where Mr. Want Death gives him opium tea. At first, Max does not feel anything, but the drugs kick in his system after a while. He changes clothes before going to the bar part of the hotel, where the residents enjoy the melancholic voice of a staff. He goes to the bar, and orders the bartender to make him a drink that will blow his mind. While there, he meets a staff member, who introduces herself as the mother, meaning she plays someone's mom until they die. Max begins to mumble and gets a little too close to the woman, as the drug influences his body. However, he gets distracted, as his mind plays a trick on him. He sees his wife in the crowd, so he follows her, leaving the woman confused. The wife walks into a room, but when Max gets in, she suddenly vanishes. He then finds Mr. Want Death lying on the bed with three naked women. Apparently, Mr. Want Death wants only some decent sex right before his death. Mr. Want Death begins to babble how everything is going to be okay. But Max imagines himself accidentally removing his tumor from his ear. He drops it on the floor from shock, and his cat eats it. Right then, his wife stands at the doorway, looking at him. The following day, Max wakes up groggy, and begins to doubt whether he made the right decision on coming to Aurora Hotel. So he goes to the tunnel to find an exit, but instead, he finds two staff pushing a metal bed, with Mr. Want Death's body on it. One of them takes him upstairs, while the other pushes Mr. Want Death. While Max thinks about his decision, the neighbor pays him a sudden visit. The neighbor shares that she also doubts her life decisions, but she wants to get a virgin dance before she dies. Like a gentleman he is, Max dances with the neighbor, fulfilling her last wish. That night, Max reminisces a moment with his wife. He surprises her with a fancy dinner, as he has ruined their supposedly special night. He cooked the food that she was supposed to order at the restaurant. He prepares himself to confess the truth, but his wife gets a phone call from her sister. The following day, Max requests the hotel staff to make a few changes to his plan. She agrees, but Max needs to talk to the manager first. So Max goes out, and finds him golfing despite the cold weather. The manager indirectly tells Max that he cannot leave the place, no matter what. Max still wants to stay with his wife, but the manager reminds him that he signed the agreement before coming to the hotel. So Max returns to the hotel as he fails to convince the manager. While in the lobby, Max witnesses the neighbor running away from the hotel personnel. She runs outside and climbs the mountains, but is soon killed by the manager with a sniping gun. After witnessing the manager killing the neighbor, 
Max returns to his room and changes his clothes for his farewell video. After the recording, the manager visits Max in his room and informs him that everything is ready and they will wait for him. Later that day, Max has his last fancy food with his wife. As they face each other, Max finally reveals the truth about his condition to his wife, causing her to break down into tears. Max hugs her as she cries. After that, they go to Max's room, where she suddenly gives him a pill. Although confused, Max takes it, and then instructs her to turn around. The wife obliges, and Max uses his finger to draw on her back, until he notices something strange. She faces him, revealing that she is not Max's real wife. Max immediately instructs her to leave, which she does. As she opens the door, she takes off her wig and informs the waiting manager that Max took his pill. However, Max goes to the bathroom and forcefully chokes himself to puke the pill out of his body. After that, he runs to the tunnel to find an exit, but instead, he finds a room with life-size jars. It is where the hotel keeps the residents, who chose the cycle of life as their death. In one of the jars, Max finds Alice's husband's earthly remains to fertilize a plant. Suddenly, a manager comes out and tells Max that he cannot escape. However, Max does not want to end his life anymore, so he runs away from the room to return to his room. But then, he is stopped by a staff at the stairs. So Max quickly goes to another ladder, which fortunately leads to an exit. However, the strong snowy wind welcomes him outside, as he exits the hotel. Max endures the breeze and hides in the nearest forest, as hotel personnel uses a motorbike to catch him. Fortunately, they fail to know his hiding spot, and the morning comes, and Max is still alive. Max leaves the forest and suddenly runs towards a person, who might be his wife. However, his big and heady steps break the ice, causing him to fall to the freezing death water. Max looks up and sees the silhouette of a person, just standing there as he submerges into the water. The following day, Max wakes up in a hospital with his wife at his bedside. They both remain silent and just hug each other. But to make sure he is not dreaming or hallucinating, Max pulls her hair, proving that the day is real. Max promises his wife that he will not leave her. After recovering, they go to the same restaurant and order the same food. As they enjoy their dinner, Max suddenly feels his feet getting cold. So he looks down and finds snow on and underneath his shoes. He then looks up and sees the same fake wife in front of him. He also notices hotel staff nearby. The wife notices this and repeatedly calls Max until he finally realizes that he just imagines things. The wife suggests they go to the hospital, but Max wants to go home. So they leave the restaurant and go to their house, where they face a like-sized plant jar. The film ends with the revelation that Alice's husband is actually in the jar. The mystery continues, as it is unclear whether Max really escaped the Aurora Hotel, or his brain tumor caused all of those hallucinations. This is Daniel's CC Movie Channel. Stay safe and enjoy your day.